Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and a very happy new year to you all. I can't believe it's 2024 already. Toysh is will be turning eight years old this year. That's pretty fantastic. So we're gonna kick it off just right with a look at a new company and a new action figure from an old-fashioned franchise, Banjo-Kazooie, the old N64 game from Premium DNA Toys. And thank you to Premium DNA for setting this out for the purposes of this video. Now, we have an excellent box here, gorgeous artwork from the original video game, along with the backside showing the old jiggy puzzle piece. And I like that little various characters make little cameos on the box. Now, this is a giant slip cover for a giant box. And, I, and I'm not joking. Here you go. Here's a little Mario figure to show you just how big a figure we're working with here. Now on the back side of said giant box, you get to see everything inside in case the window box packaging wasn't good enough. But you get to see Banjo, you get to see Kazooie, you get to see the backpacks. You get to see everything that this awesome looking figure entails. Very excited about this. And here's everyone involved with the creation of said figure. So thank you very much for that. But... In either case, this is gonna be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, plug in those N64s and blow in those cartridges and make sure to grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. That's key for the year of 2024. We're taking a look at the brand new Banjo-Kazooie action figure by Premium DNA Toys. And while I got all you Diddy Kong racers here, again, I just wanna say thank you again to everyone who watched my social channels, including my YouTube, in the year of 2023. It was my biggest one yet, and here's to an awesome 2024. So why don't you consider subscribing? Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So here is everything out of the giant box. Not even joking you. So you get a nice swip swap out parts you got two giant figures, and let's just go ahead and talk about it. Now, the first figure we'll be taking a look at out of this classic video game duo is Kazooie. And I will tell you this, this is a beautifully rendered, beautifully sculpted, and beautifully painted action figure. In opening this up, I was blown away. This is my first foray into premium DNA toys, and I gotta say, I like what I sees. This is just a great looking video game adaptation from the source material into plastic form. Even the little tufts of yellow all over the red really stands out. She doesn't have peg holes on the bottom. That's one thing I do like with action figures. It does say Microsoft stamped on the bottom there, but this is a beautiful recreation. And the articulation is Supoib as well. Very sturdy, nothing loose, nothing you have to worry about because you want Kazooie's arms out when you have her inside the backpack. But I will tell you, she does get very front heavy with those extra wings extended, right? The legs, you can sort of move them around. You do get some articulation out of them, but it's kind of a mixed bag. You might be able to figure things out. She does have a bit of a, a thigh rotation, you could say, but this is entirely too front heavy when you want the wings out. And I'm sure you might be able to figure out something if you wanted to, of course, pose Kazooie like this, but let's be honest, she looks the best inside the backpack, but I found that putting the wings back as such really counterbalanced the weight. Even with the long beak that extends out, you should be able to pose her out that way. And you do get plenty of head articulation as well. That is a great way to display as an alternate situation to then putting her in the backpack, but you just separate her at the waist, just like that. And as you'll soon see, yes, she plugs into the back of the backpack beautifully. Now, if you notice inside the mouth, there is a porthole. And that is, of course, where the Kazooie trumpet is going to go. And it's all one piece, nicely done, well rendered and painted silver. And as such, you just simply plug that right into her mouth and you get the full video game experience. And that looks good. It's simplicity at its finest and I couldn't be happier, especially when you see her inside the backpack. And speaking of which, that is nicely done as well. So for Banjo's backpack, it's all blue. You get a little peg hole that'll stick in his back. You got the straps. Everything that needs paint is painted and it's done nicely, all the way down to the buckles and such. Now right here, this 
gave me a bit of a trouble and it might give you some trouble when it's on the actual figure. But these do peg in very well, but you have to get it at the right angle. And when you have it on the figure, that can be kind of a nuisance as you'll soon see. Now at the top, this part of the backpack comes off. And of course, as you may have guessed it, yes, that is where Kazooie will plug in. But I like that they gave you that option if you want to display it alternately. But yes, I think we're all in agreement that Kazooie will look the best on display when she is plugged into Banjo's backpack. And yes, that does look quite awesome. So it doesn't hinder any of the articulation. You can rotate her as well. The arms are free. The head is free. Displayer with a trumpet, displayer without. She's sturdy in there. You could turn this thing over and toss her around to a varying degree, of course. But yeah, that definitely looks great. Now, for Banjo, you do get some alternate hands. Banjo holding hands and Banjo strumming hands. Now, you will see some paint fleckage right there where they peg into the joints. They painted the joints. It's kind of something you'll have to deal with. We've seen that with numerous companies over the years. Now, with the extra added Banjo head portrait, that's nicely rendered, nicely detailed, nicely sculpted, nicely painted. You notice I keep saying the same things over and over. It's very heavy as well. In fact, the total weight of this figure with Kazooie, the Banjo, Banjo figure, the backpack, it'll make you laugh when it's all put together, but that's coming up shortly. You also get Banjo's Banjo, and again, that's nicely done. It's very simple. You have some silver strings, the Banjo itself, Everything looks good. When you turn it over, it does leave a little bit to be desired, of course. It looks almost hollow-ish, right? Nothing going on in the back. But that's how it looks in the video game, so I'm not too hard up on it, especially since we're all going to be displaying it front forward, right? Now, you do get the golden jiggy piece. And like any Mario figure, Nintendo figure, you always want to get the power-ups, the collectibles, and premium DNA uh, was awesome to include this. Now, with the actual Banjo action figure, again, much like Kazooie, much like all the different accessories, he's beautifully rendered. It's an awesome looking figure, awesome combination. There's a nice wash within the fur to bring out all those details with the peg hole on the back where the backpack clips in. You have his pants with the stitching, the bottom of his feet, which are nicely done. Again, no peg holes on that. You have his toenails, his fingernails, his silver belt buckle, and his pendant necklace. That, of course, you can remove and move around when you swap out the head portraits, but it's just nice to have a really cool, solid action figure, especially as the first one we're looking at for 2024. The quality is definitely there, especially with the articulation, moving the head around, the arms. Everything looks really good on this, and it will look amazing as a display piece in your Nintendo collection. Now, it's not going to be an insanely articulated action figure. You got it in the arms, you got it single jointed elbows, the wrists, they'll spin at the elbow. He does have a fairly awesome ab crunch, I will say. He goes all the way down. But for me, in what I would be trying to recreate on my shelves, it has just the perfect amount of articulation, right? You could get him walking if you want. You have single jointed knees that'll spin at the knee, and then he has some feet to go up and down and rock as such. But again, well-painted, well-articulated for the source material, and it's just a hefty, heavy figure that stands really well because this is heavy. This is going to be a heavy action figure. And just wait, uh, it just looks awesome when you put it all together. Now, swapping out the heads is easy. There's no stuckage, there's nothing you have to pry off. Just make sure you get the necklace all situated nice, and you can see the difference between the two head portraits, one smiling and one solemn. Now. With the banjo, I did find with the hands that are supposed to hold it, it will continuously fall through because the grip in a certain way, you can't really get it to go. However, that being said, I did heat up the hands and fit the banjo inside and had no problem. So he holds it perfectly. It's just a really tight grip. So I do recommend heating up those hands. That way you don't mess up any of the paint with the banjo or his hands or otherwise. And he just holds it really well, that's really cool. So then from looking at the Jiggy piece, then the Banjo, the Banjo action figure, and then of course, Kazooie herself. This is an awesome action figure. And again, to reiterate, it's really fun to kick 2024 off 
was such a display piece. If you were a fan, and I know this is a very distinct fandom, right? N64 and everything, but this is a an amazing Banjo-Kazooie action figure. And if you're wondering the scale, this would be my only gripe, if I had any, is that no, it's not gonna fit with any prior Nintendo offerings like from Jack Specific or otherwise. You can see that this Banjo-Kazooie figure is immense. It's a giant action figure, but it's a very much a statement piece. And again, for all you Diddy Kong racers out there, from which I know Banjo the best, and I know Banjo Kazooie, I think I played it a couple times, but I'm a fan of the Nintendo Rare franchises and all those games back in the day. So yes, this will definitely be sitting next to my N64, the controllers, and all of that. Now do keep in mind, Premium DNA has two versions of this Banjo-Kazooie. You have the standard and you have the flocked. The flocked version has a really nice flocked texture all where the fur would be. And it's nicely done. However, when you move the joints, you will see some flockage roughage in moving it just as you would the paint for the standard version. That would be my only downside to this figure because otherwise it makes it look very expensive. It makes it look cool. It almost makes me wish they had done a little bit more to Kazooie as well, just to kind of give her a flocked look. But from the back to the sides, everything looks good and everything is the exact same as the standard Banjo-Kazooie. Again, just being that one is a more pricier flocked version and then one is the more standard version. And if honestly, if I had to pick, I would go more for the standard version. I like flocked figures and whatnot, but I think the standard one at its price point definitely meets the requirements for a Banjo-Kazooie action figure. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new premium DNA toys, Banjo-Kazooie. And I gotta tell you, they knocked it out of the park with this one. It's gonna be a bit of a quality over quantity, methinks, for 2024. And no, this figure is not exactly cheap, but this is a smaller company making a smaller run of action figures. But for the price point and what you're getting, this is a gorgeous display piece. And for all you N64, Nintendo, 90s enthusiasts, yes, this will meet and check all your boxes for a really cool action figure for that collection. So you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Banjo-Kazooie, and stay tuned to my socials. We're going to be giving away a couple of these figures, so check out my Instagram coming soon. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, if this action figure is any inclination as to what 2024 has in store, me thinks it's gonna be a great year. And when it is, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.